Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and I get a lot of questions about creating uh, your own LFO shapes by being able to draw in waveforms. So today I'm going to do a video on that. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel We're coming out with uh, a new reactor video every week as well as a bunch of other music production tutorials. All right, so let's get started. Uh, this tutorial is going to be really similar to some stuff I created recently about creating your own wavetable oscillators. Um, and the reason for that is that it's almost the exact same thing. Um, the difference is that this time we're going to be using events instead of um, audio tables. So the first thing we want to do is add an event table to our structure and this is going to hold our custom waveform and we want to set the table size. I'm just going to choose uh, a power 2, 2048. Uh, you can choose any number you want here really. Uh, it's kind of a habit for computer programmers to use powers of 2 for these types of situations because um, for certain cases uh, your CPU will handle it better. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case here, but it just kind of becomes a habit. All right, so LFOs typically have a range from negative 1 to 1, so let's just set the value range up here. And uh, let's go to the view, uh, panel view here. And in order to draw in our table, you select the table draw mode after right clicking, and you'll be able to draw in values. And you'll see uh, when we draw past the edge of the event table, the uh, values that we're drawing kind of wrap around. And I really hate this effect, so to change it, we can go to the Clip Wrap menu here in the Mode section of the Properties and just select Clip. And next, let's go over to the View tab and turn off the scroll bars and the label and all that junk that's just kind of cluttering up our view. And I also like to turn on the value grid. And so that's just going to give us a straight line through um, the zero point of the graph, which just gives us a little bit of orientation to where things are, which I find useful. All right, so that's pretty much for being able to draw in values. Uh, one more thing I like to do is just turn off the right position in the view because we're not really going to be ever uh, changing the right position from zero and it just kind of clutters up and looks ugly in there. All right, so now that we can draw in our oscillator, now all we need to do is read it out of our event table. And just like we did with the wavetable oscillator, we can use a ramp oscillator to do this. And we want to give our Rx value a uh, incoming value from 0 to dx minus 1. And so in order to accomplish that, we can just give our ramp oscillator an amplitude of dx minus 1. So take the dx output of the event table and subtract 1 and connect it to the amplitude input of the oscillator. All right, so I'm just going to create a frequency control by right-clicking and using the create control command. And I'm not going to do anything fancy with the uh, frequency, like syncing it to the BPM or anything. Uh, I have a few tutorials about that already. If you want to check them out, I'll give a link to one in the uh, video description. Probably the easiest method would be to multiply the output of a tempo info module by a power of 2. Alright, so I'm going to use a gate module to sync the LFO to a new incoming gate. And that's just going to restart the LFO whenever we press a new MIDI note. Then I'm going to use the system info module from the auxiliary menu. And we're going to use the CR output, which stands for control rate. And what that's going to do is it just outputs a value um, at the control rate, whatever our event rate is set to. So this is just going to read our current value from the table um, at the event rate. 
Right. And um, the last thing I want to mention is turning on interpolate in the event table for the X values is useful because the output of a ramp oscillator is not always going to be a whole number. So, for example, you know, we have our table with uh, 2048 values, and our ramp oscillator might be telling us to read value 3.75 between values 3 and 4. So, uh, when we turn interpolation on, that's going to give us a good morph between those two values. All right, so just to test this work really quick, I'm going to use a sawtooth oscillator and we're going to modulate the pitch uh, with the output of this LFO. So let's just load up a pitch, a gate, and the sawtooth module and I'm just going to use the gate to control the amplitude and we'll add the pitch to the output of the LFO. It's the dead simple setup here. And once we connect to the output, we can test to see if our LFO is working. Alright, so if you want to get some good straight lines when you're drawing, you can hold down the shift key while pressing the mouse and drag to a new position on the graph in order to create a straight line from point A to point B. And this is just useful for creating something a little more precise than what you'd be able to get just on your own with a mouse. And of course you can get a little more creative with this and like use this event table as a sort of an arpeggiator and change the value range from negative 12 to 12 and give it a step size of 1. Alright, so there's a lot of different stuff you could do with this setup. Um, one problem in particular is that the event table does not store its data in snapshots. And uh, in a previous wavetable tutorial, I showed how you could work around this problem. And so I'm going to link to that tutorial in the video description as well if you want to create a snapshot system for this um, drawable LFO the same technique will apply so that's that all right so this is salamander anagram with reactortutorials.com uh, i hope you'll check out our website and i'll be back with a new tutorial next week